Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to tell you all a little bit about the journey that I'm on now. Um, I've been through a lot. Um, and I didn't really look at it as a lot until I was meeting with someone the other day and he said, what I want you to do is I want you to make a list of the things that God has already delivered you from. Okay, that didn't seem like a lot until I started writing it down. Um, I have my little list on my notepad because if I didn't, I wouldn't have it right. Um, in January, I found out that I had a gallstone um, and they were gonna have to go in and remove my gallbladder. That was supposed to be about a three or four week recovery time. Um, I never take the time that they tell me I'm supposed to take because I feel like I have to be doing something. I'm, I, it's hard for me to sit around. It's hard for me to wait. Um, here lately, I've done a lot of waiting. Um, on February the 7th, I took our grandmother to the hospital. We spent 22 days between Pineville Hospital and Piedmont. Um, she had pneumonia. They called it COVID. The doctor said he wasn't treating her for COVID. I don't know what she had. But during that time, I was forced to wait. Not because anybody told me I had to, um, but my grandmother was in a facility that was short staffed. Um, I could feel that she wouldn't have what I felt like she deserved if I wasn't there. But in reality, I think that that was a time that God used to help strengthen my faith because he showed up every day. It was like clockwork. I would get up early, I would get ready, I would go to the hospital and I'd spend the whole day there until visiting hours was over. But during that time, it wasn't about anything that was really going on in the room because my grandmother was kind of out of it so we couldn't really have a whole lot of conversation on the days that we could conversate. Um, we did. I did a lot of praying. I did a lot of soul searching. I did a lot of studying. I read more scripture in that 20 days than I've probably read in years. Sad but true. Um, it took me being to that point to realize God was bigger than I realized he was. Like, yes, I prayed. Yes, I thought I was seeking him. But what I think I was seeking was self-satisfaction, self-peace, the things that Jackie wanted, not the things that God wanted for Jackie. Um, I wasn't giving him what I should. I wasn't seeking after the God that I said I loved, the God that I said I served. Um, I wasn't doing bad. I was staying busy doing things that helped other people even. Um, but I wasn't taking the time alone to wait and to listen to God. Um, I've told many people many times that the river is my happy place. The river is the place that I decided, well, I didn't decide. God called me when I was at the river one day. I was floating along my friends were ahead of me. Some were behind me. Um, I don't like to paddle a lot when I'm at the river, but that's because that was my time to take in everything that was going on around me. Um, the beautiful trees, the flowers, the, the animals, just there's so much in nature that goes on unseen like it's hard to explain unless you're there um but i would spend that time just kind of listening listening to the birds listening to just everything going on um the 
people in the distance, the, the, the language they used, um, some of the things they said. These are my friends. These are my family. People I love so very much. But I was at a point in my life that God was really calling me to do something that I wasn't really interested in. Like, I didn't want to go back to church. I didn't want to read more scripture. I didn't want to be settled into religion because I didn't want any part of it. Nothing good seemed to come out of my past religious um, relationship. And that's because it wasn't a relationship. It was a self-seeking, self-motivating relationship, I guess you would say. Because I wanted God to do for me, but I wasn't ready to do for God. Um, I've spent a few years, like I couldn't even tell you like dates because I'm terrible with dates. But I went to church. Um, read scripture, did Bible studies, have, I have had a personal relationship with God for a few years now. Um, I've been seeking after the knowledge that I need, the knowledge that God wants me to have. Um, I think when God really gets your attention, um, and you truly realize that it's God, it's hard to walk away. A lot of people say that, you know, you can, you can lose your salvation. I can see that. Um, but then again, now that I truly am a child of God, I don't see me walking away. All of his goodness, all of the great things that he does for me, um, on March the 10th. I went to the hospital. I thought it was my appendix. Uh, Travis told me, you know, you're going. I know you don't want to, basically. This is paraphrasing. It's not his exact words, but he told me I was going to the hospital because I was in pain and he was tired of hearing me say that I was in pain. Um, very hard-headed. Get that from my dad. My dad didn't go to the hospital. Didn't go to the doctor like he should. And when they found his cancer, it was stage four. He lived for 13 days. On March 10th, when I went to the doctor, it was my appendix, or at least that's my self-diagnosed. What was wrong with me? Um, but when I got there, they did a CAT scan. Um, the lady in the ER, when she checked me in, she asked me where my pain was, and I told her, and she said, that's too high to be your appendix sat in the waiting room for at least a couple hours. And then I went back in the room and they did the CAT scan and the doctor came in. He had on one of those bubble things that they were wearing for COVID to, to protect the doctors from whatever all of us had. Um, and when he came back in, he said, your appendix looks fine. Um, there's a cyst on your ovary, and I believe we found the beginning stages of cancer in your colon. That was devastating. From that point, all I could think about was, I'm not ready to die. Like, I have so much left to do. Um, in the back of my mind, I knew it was cancer, but there were still hopes that that emergency room doctor had no clue what he was talking about. But here again, I had to wait. I waited two weeks. Um, two weeks later, I went for my first colonoscopy. I'm 43 years old. I'm supposed to have seven more years before I have to do that procedure. The doctor ended the colonoscopies earlier than, like he didn't finish the procedure. 
when I went in, they told me that no one could go back with me. Um, that my mom would have to wait in the car on me. But when I came out and I was coming out of the anesthesia, he said, the nurse asked who was with me. And I said, my mom's in the car. And she said, well, she'll be in shortly. And I thought like really quick, like I'm a very quick thinker. Ask anybody who knows me. Um, I can fire back pretty quick, but I told the nurse, I said, um, something has to be wrong. Like, you told me my mom couldn't come in in the beginning. Now you want to see my mom. Um, my mom's 70. I need to know what's going on before you bring her in here and give her any bad news. And she just confirmed the fact that my mom would be in here shortly. And my mom was right there. Uh, done a lot of waiting between here and there. I've seen doctors, I've gone to different um, doctors, and I saw one last week that saw me not knowing if he was gonna get paid or not. Um, their practice no longer accepts my insurance. And they told me they would try to push it through the insurance, and if it didn't happen, it, you know, it'll be, it'll, it'll be okay. I told, I've told everybody it has to be God because I don't just get to go to a doctor's appointment for free normally. Um, it costs you to do everything in this world. But God has provided for me along the way. I'm still waiting. Um, I go May 3rd for colon surgery. I don't think I've ever like really told everybody out there that it is colon cancer. Um, they did find it early. Um, they're going to go in and they're going to remove a portion of my colon, put it back together, and I'm going to be good to go. I know this because I have faith and confidence that God is going to take care of me. But whatever my journey is along the way, I want everyone to see God's hand at work because He is the one who who leads me, who guides me, and who directs me. Um, I don't remember if I told y'all this and all this, but February 27th, um, I decided to get rebaptized, And I did that for the main reason is because when I got baptized the first time, it wasn't because I was a child of God. It wasn't a public confession of who I believed in. Um, it was because I wanted to get married. And to me, all of that was in vain. Um, but now that I know I'm a child of God, that 50 degree water that Pastor John stuck us in that day to baptize us, I'll never forget that. And it's not because the water was so cold. It's because at that moment, even though I had been, I had surrendered my life to God. Yes, there are times that even though I've given my life to God, I try to pick it back up myself. But he is the one who leads me. He's the one who guides me. And he directs all of my paths. Um, they're not always the way I want them to be. Um, I never wanted to hear the words, you have cancer. But in this journey, I want to praise him from the beginning of it till I have the victory of saying, I have no more cancer. Um, I want him to use my life to be a light to those who are in my path. Um, I don't want anyone to ever be able to say anything but she is a child of God. 
I want them to know without a doubt that I'm a child of God. Not that I care what anybody thinks of me, because truthfully, um, it's 100% between me and God. But I feel like that along this journey, I'm not supposed to be by myself. Um, I'm not supposed to stop living. I'm not supposed to give up hope. Um, instead, I'm supposed to keep pushing forward. I'm supposed to serve God with my fullest. Every person who comes in my path, I want to be able to, to witness to them, to let them see what God's doing. That doesn't necessarily mean I need to go out here and say, hey, look, I'm a Christian. Hey, look, God's doing this. Hey, look, God's doing that. No, by the life I live, I want people to have no doubts whatsoever that Jackie is indeed a child of God. As I go into surgery, I want you all to pray for me. I want you to pray for my family. I want you to pray for the doctors that are around. The people who come into my life um, while I'm in the hospital. My friends, I love y'all. And I, I really appreciate the love and support that you've given me. Um, I can't wait for my eight weeks to be up. I'm finally going to take my first real camping trip. Um, as much as I love the outdoors, I've never slept in it without the luxuries of a motel room. Um, I call it camping when you rent a house and you go kayaking in the river nearby. My friends call it camping when you stay in a tent um, by the river. I'm excited about what God's doing in my life, and I do have to wait a little while. Um, but in my waiting, I want to, I want to praise Him. I want to give Him all the glory that He deserves. Thank you all, and have a good day.